I can hardly believe the speed with which time passes. However, there's nothing I can do about that, so I simply thank you. For joining me again via this audio, I hope all is well with you and your family in every possible way. I'd like us to take a look at what it cost Christ to come to our rescue. It will not be a comprehensive review. We'll just look at a few things, and then I'll try to make a point that I think will be reasonable. One of the costs for your salvation and mine is the fact that Christ gave up being exclusively divine. I'm choosing my words very carefully. He gave up being exclusively divine. He added to his divinity the human nature, humanity. And so Christ came as a child in a woman's womb. For nine months he was born in a manger among animals where there was dung and urine and everything else. And that's part of the cost of saving you and me. Christ still has human form now. So we extend that cost. Throughout eternity, Christ will have human form. But not just human form. He will have human form with scars. If you read Luke 24, 36 to 43 carefully, Christ came from the grave with the scars. That's why he invited the disciples to look at his hand and his side and his feet. He still had the marks of the crucifixion, and he knew those marks would conclusively identify him as the Savior who walked with them three and a half years. We're discussing part of the cost of our salvation. Serious cost. Another cost was the risk Christ took. He could have sinned, and if he had sinned once, I can hardly imagine the consequences that would have been universal, catastrophic, cataclysmic if Jesus Christ had sinned once. If Christ went through all of that for your salvation, what are you prepared to go through to obey him? Now, of course, I target the Seventh-day Sabbath. Most people have no problem with the fact that Seventh-day Adventists promote a healthy lifestyle. We urge meatless diet. We urge education. We urge not wearing jewelry and other forms of ornamentation that have no practical value. Those are the things we emphasize. We also emphasize obeying the law of God. When one decides to keep the Sabbath, it may have a serious effect on that person's livelihood because the Sabbath forbids us to work on that day or the law of God forbids us to work on that day. And this is the sticking point for many. It's a threat to their survival. It's a threat to life. For others, it's a threat to the education because we do not support taking exams and going to class on the seventh day Sabbath. But if Christ went to such a length to provide salvation for you and for me, should not gratitude drive you and me to go to as far a length as we can go to say, thank you, Jesus, for saving me or providing salvation. And I express my gratitude by accepting your sacrifice and choosing to obey you. Yes, the Seventh-day Sabbath is a challenge. If you're Catholic, you can become a Baptist and not change your life. If you're Lutheran, you can become a Presbyterian and not change your life. If you're Pentecostal, you can become something else, some of the Sunday keeping church, and not substantially change your life. When you choose to be a Seventh-day Adventist and to honor God's Seventh-day Sabbath, your life undergoes drastic changes. And this is where people find a problem and a challenge. But Christ overcame the challenge because he was driven by love. And so he took on human form. He has the scars of the crucifixion. He's no longer omnipresent. He cannot be everywhere at the same time. He laid that aside. And this will be the case forever. Considering that, I call upon you, my friend. Let that touch your heart and drive you to the point of saying, if Christ can do all of that for me, can I not make this sacrifice, give up what I've accustomed to doing, which is unbiblical, and accept the seventh-day Sabbath of the Lord, of which Jesus says, I am the Lord of the Sabbath. And when he said that, he did not have Sunday in mind. 
As you consider my words, as you consider keeping the Sabbath holy, may the Spirit of God, the Spirit that wrote the law on the tables of stone, and the Spirit who is eager to write those laws in your heart, may He bring you to the point, under the force of sweet love, the point of saying, I surrender to Christ, and by His grace, by His unfailing power, I will keep His seventh-day Sabbath, regardless of the cost, even as he came to save me, regardless of the cost. May the Lord bless you as you return the love to Christ that he showed to you. And that love is simply expressed in obedience from the heart. Happy Sabbath, and may the Lord bless you abundantly and doubly bless your children.